so I can see the one things you've done for me. Hey, oh, hey, oh. oh my, so I can see. Hey, hey. Woo, are you enjoying the ride in the safari? I've had such a good time so far, just learning all about the Bible, learning the different books of the Bible. These are the books of the Bible. Oh, the wonderful books of the Bible. Yeah! You know what I mean? I love this series. It's great. Did you eat something poisonous? Because you were making some funny noises. Oh, hey guys. Welcome back. We're excited to have you guys again here today where we're going to go on another Bible adventure and get ready to have some fun, sing, and play. All right, but first, let's open up with a little prayer. Bow your head. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we thank you for this day, for the opportunity to gather together. Lord, I just pray that you begin to touch the hearts of all your servants, Lord. Begin to touch the hearts of all your all those who watch and listen. Lord, we praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Let's get going. Open my eyes so I can see. Hey. Things you have for me. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Open my eyes so I can be hey, oh, hey, oh. all that you have planned for me. Head up, head down. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Arms to the sky, arms to the ground. Can see hey, oh, hey, oh. the wonderful things you have for me. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Open my eyes so I can be hey, oh, hey, oh. all that you have planned for me. Head up, head down. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Arms to the sky, arms to the ground. Monkey with it. Head up, head down. Arms to the sky, arms to the ground. Come on now, spin around. Stop. Monkey, monkey with it. Oh, oh, yellow, so rainbow, caterpillar, right? Brown, black. 
is a that is a very interesting castle. Is it Portugal? Today, the importance of studying the Bible. And to do so, we're going to look into our Bible. In 2 Kings chapter 22, starts the reign of King Josiah. Ooh, say it again. Josiah. Ooh, Josiah. Josiah was king of Judah. Let me give you a little background story before we start though. After King Solomon, the kingdom of Israel split into two. The northern kingdom, which was called Israel, and the southern kingdom, which was called Judah. Judah held Jerusalem. Jerusalem held the temple of God. In the northern kingdom, say it with me, northern Israel. Northern Israel. Southern Judah. Southern Judah. The southern kingdom of Judah holds the temple. The northern kingdom had only wicked kings during its time. The southern kingdom had a mixture, some good, some bad. King Amos, before King Josiah, was a wicked king. And there was a lot of idolatry worship underneath of his rule and reign. Well, after he dies, Josiah becomes king. Does anybody want to take a guess what age Josiah was when he became king? Well, if you didn't guess eight, then you're probably, then you're definitely wrong. <laughs> Josiah was eight years old when he became king. Can you imagine eight years old? That's a heavy bit of responsibility to be king at eight. You 
can't even clean your room a lot of times without being told at eight years old. Trust me, I know. I've got a few kids that age. Well, King Josiah was responsible for the entire kingdom. And the Bible tells us in the 18th year of his rule and reign, he tells some of his workers to go and go to the temple. To go to the temple and take the money from the temple to pay the priests and to pay the workers to fix to fix the temple. At that time, there was a lot of idolatry. Idolatry is when we worship things that are not God. There could be idols in your life and my life. Things like money can be an idol. Xbox can be an idol. Those things by themselves aren't bad. But when we begin to worship them and begin to spend too much time on them, TV can be an idol. Those things become idols in our lives. But in this point of Judah's history, they've been worshiping the false god of Baal. They've built statues, um, and, and they've got a lot of wicked things going on in their kingdom. Things that God would not be pleased up with. But during the time when they go to the temple to start fixing it back up, something happens. They find the Holy Scriptures. This is going to make all the difference in the world. Because before, when they're worshiping idols, maybe when they started worshiping idols, they knew that it was wrong. And they knew they shouldn't do that. But Josiah goes to the temple because there must because he's raised by a man of God. His father wasn't a man of God, but there was a prophet who was close to him who helped raise him up. And he stressed to him the importance of the temple and the scripture. When they find the scripture, they read the scripture and they find out Israel's in a pretty, or Judah's in a pretty bad place right now. They're not honoring God, and God is not pleased with their idol worship. So, jo Josiah begins to clean up the mess. He begins to put everything back right in the kingdom. He begins to do the things that the scripture says, to try to honor God's law. He begins to honor God and put God first in his kingdom. And as he does so, God begins to restore the people. Josiah will eventually pass away and the kingdom will fall back into idol worship. But the important thing to get out of this lesson today is how are we going to know what God expects of us unless we read his word? We're not just guessing. We've been left scripture that we've already talked about being God-breathed that it's God inspired for our instruction and for our help. All we have to do is open it and begin to read it. In our country, we are, we can quote some scriptures, but for the most part, we're biblically illiterate. A lot of people don't know what the Bible says. They quote scripture because it sounds nice or or a scripture that may make them feel better. And a lot of times it's taken out of context. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. That's because we don't understand and we don't read the scripture. If we're going to know what God desires for us, we're going to have to get into his word and open it up. And before we do so, we're going to need the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because we're going to need God to begin to deal with our hearts as we read through his word. God, transform us into your likeness. God, we're asking you, when we open this scripture, can you begin just to move on our hearts? Just change us from the inside out. Holy Spirit, speak to us. We want to be pleasing to you. Anyways, we want to make your kingdom our priority just like Josiah did. And when we do so, 
Your word tells us that when my people who are called by my name repent from their wicked ways, that you will heal their land and that they will be your people and that you will be their God. That's a powerful, powerful promise. But we don't know that promise and we can't stand on that promise if we don't know the God of the universe and if we don't know what his word says to us. We can have a lot of misconceptions about God if we don't know what his word says. A lot of misunderstandings happen because we don't understand and don't read God's word. All right, guys. Well, see you in a bit. Hey guys, how's it going? Today I have Landon, the explorer here with me. Though he dropped his hat. That's okay, you want your hat back? Yeah, sure. So Landon, I wanted to show something to you. I, you know what this is? A straw? <laughs> Very good, it is a straw. This straw, you know, even being out here, once in a while the wind seems to blow. And when the wind blows, this straw could be carried off and taken taken down the field but we're not going to let it go down the field because i don't want to litter that would be considered littering and i don't want to do that and right we need it. and we do need it so i wanted to show you something about this straw if you put a little pressure on this straw It'll bend. it bends yeah if i put pressure the other way it bends it bends in fact Anywhere I put pressure on the straw, it's gonna bend. I can even fold it and make it into a triangle almost. I used to try to do this when I was a kid. But I'm not gonna finish it now, but still, I, I can, believe me, okay? I, I promise I can do it. I can make it into a triangle, okay? <laughs> so, or I can make it into a square. I can make it into the things I want it to be uh, because it bends. Because there's not much to it's it, right? Clumsy. It's it's subject to whatever I do to it. If I if I put pressure on it, it's gonna bend. Because there's nothing inside. Because there's nothing inside. Very good. So this straw represents us. If 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 we go on and and, and we listen to all kinds of false doctrines, we don't know really know what what truth is. Um, there's a lot of things out there. Even even highly educated people who who are can who don't know truth. In fact, uh, Pontius Pilate and Jesus have that discussion when Jesus is going to the cross. Jesus says, you know, the, Jesus says that he is the truth and, and uh, Pontius Pilate says, what is truth, Denver, right? He says actually- that it's flimsy like the straw. Yeah, and exactly. So when, when we're without truth, when we're without Christ in our life, when when we don't know our scripture and we don't have a word to stand on, um, we're kind of flexible, like this straw. Yeah. We just kind of bend any which way we feel pressure. Oh, oh, I felt, I felt this way. But can't but, bend both ways at the same time. You can't do that. That's true, you can't bend both ways at the same time. So if God wanted me to go this way, but I was feeling pressure there, and I didn't know the word of God, and I didn't know the truths that God has for me, then I might bend the opposite direction because I feel pressure. But this represents the word of God. Feel that, Landon? It's hard. Can you bend that? Nope. No, that's pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you can't what. what. You can't bend this at all. And actually, on this end, it's pretty sharp too, so it can get where it needed to go. But God's word is always truth. Even when it stands alone by itself, it's truth. It rather whether you bend or not, the word is true, right? Right. But when you get God's word inside of you, you become solid rock. You become you're standing on the solid rock, right? Yep. That's right. You're not the firm foundation. The firm foundation. Very good. Yep. See, you can build it at all. So now, this straw has become unbendable. It's not malleable or flexible to any of the elements around it. But if it moves away from it, it will become bendable. 
That's true. So the best thing to do is to stay rooted in God's word. So that way we're not we're not flexing the truth. That way we know what the truth is and we can stand on it. Right? right. Thanks for helping me out today, Lane, and I really appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll see you next time. I just want to thank you guys for coming out, for being a part of our journey, for being a part of this safari. Thanks for riding with us today. As you leave today, I want you to keep in mind the importance of reading and knowing God's word. It's where we grab our promises, it's how we know who he is, it's how we distinguish and determine truth. It's also how we have discernment from what's right and what's wrong. So I would encourage you today, even, I wouldn't say, go home and, and, and read your Bible all day and all night long. That's unrealistic. Though if you do, that'd be awesome. But even if it's just a little bit of time of day, time in a day, and just say, set aside 10 minutes starting out a day. We waste more than 10 minutes watching television shows, playing video games, talking on the phone to our friends. We waste 10 minutes all the time. Why don't we take 10 minutes and spend it with God? Spend it reading His Word. I bet you could get, a, I bet you could get an entire chapter read in 10 minutes. So, I'm gonna challenge you today to read in one chapter a day. And then maybe we'll step it up next time. But get into God's word. Know God's word. It's important. Now, let's close out with prayer. Lord, as we begin to open your word and we begin to read on our own, Lord, I pray that you just begin to speak to us and teach us. Lead us in your ways and teach us. For you are the God of our salvation. In you, we hope all of our days. Lord, we praise you and we honor you. Begin to speak to us and use us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. See you next time. Let's learn the books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth. First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament! Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody. Hebrews and James. Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first, second, third John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah, we did it. That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's word. 